All right. Greg, can you hear me just to make sure? I can hear you. Okay, cool. I think we are officially live. So just make sure we are good to go. Let some people trickle in before we get started here. Okay. Oops. All right. We are good to go. Cool. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on another live stream. My name is Amanda, and I am with the Cyberry team. And I'm super excited to introduce Greg Childers. So Greg is one of our newest live training instructors at Cyberry. So we figured what better way to introduce him to you all by a live stream. So what we're going to do today um, a bit of an Ask Me Anything Q&A, as well as a high-level overview into some of the certs that Greg teaches. So he's going to go a bit in-depth into the Certified Cybersecurity, CyberSec First Responder, Pentest Plus, and CAS Plus. So we'll do a bit of an overview to those certs, but for the Q&A portion, please feel free to really ask Greg anything. <laughs> he is a technical trainer with over 20 years of experience, has taught a wide variety of different courses. So he has a lot of knowledge and experience in how to pass and how to prepare. I shouldn't say how to pass because who's to say, but how to prepare best for those certifications. Um, and really anything that you guys want to know about him, ask away here. And there will be other activities that he's doing with us that we'll talk about a little bit later. But with that, Greg, I will hand it over to you to kick us off and then I'll be back for the Q&A. Okay. Well, thank you very much. As we said before, my name is Greg Childers. I'm a technical trainer and have been one for 24 years now. I've worked for several different training companies um, in different cities where I've lived around the United States. I got my start in my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, and was a trainer there. I moved to Syracuse, New York for nine years. I was a trainer there. And now I live in the greater Tampa Bay area, and I'm still a trainer. I think at this point, that's my career path uh, because I've been doing this for over 20 years. As you can see from the slide, I've got quite a few certifications. I am, I think, two certifications away from basically running the table on the CompTIA certifications. I still have to get the second half of my certified technical trainer and there's Linux Plus. I get those two and I get the full set. And I think, you know, some dishes come with that as well. I've also got several Microsoft certifications. I've got the ISC Squared Certified in Cybersecurity certification. I've got the CertNexus CyberSec First Responder certification. And there's several others that I don't have listed here. Like for example, I didn't list uh, necessarily all of them. Uh, I've got certifications from the PMI, from ISACA, uh, from Fortinet, from Devo, you know, several other companies as well. Uh, it just doesn't fit on one page. If you'd like to find out more information about me, uh, there's a link inside the slide that actually shows my LinkedIn profile. You can check that out. Uh, it's got all the information you need to know about me. Um, just a little bit about myself, you know, what got me into teaching and training. Um, many years ago, I was working for a pharmaceutical company in the data center, and I was the low man on the totem pole. I didn't really know a lot about information technology at the time, but fortunately for me, I had great mentors there who would guide me and teach me the things that I needed to know. And I was always very inquisitive, and I was always a quick learner. In fact, I learned so quickly that eventually I started mentoring people who had been there longer than myself. I was just picking up, you know, little random bits of information and sharing it with my coworkers. Well, a friend of mine actually had a job as a technical trainer and they suggested, you know, based on my interest, that it might be something that I might be suited for. And I went to the company and I, you know, uh, applied for a job as a trainer. They made me do a sort of test teach to see if I had any, you know, flair for it whatsoever. And all these years later, still doing it. Um, it's a passion of mine. I really enjoy doing it. I have been on the other side. I have worked in production. I have worked as a database administrator, a website administrator, a programmer. I've worked in infrastructure. I've worked in cybersecurity. 
Uh, you name it, I've probably built it, fixed it, or broken it myself at some point. The reason I've gotten into cybersecurity is one of my main areas of focus is that I've actually experienced some incidents myself. I had a couple of incidents of someone impersonating me, and they basically just emptied out my bank account. And, you know, the feeling of losing all that money, um, you know, especially when you have bills to pay, really left me feeling vulnerable. And I said, not only am I not going to experience this again, I'm going to do everything I can to prevent loss for others as well. Uh, but I know that I can't do it all myself. I can't be at the office every single day. I can't, you know, protect all data. But as a trainer, I can help other people increase their skill sets and become better cybersecurity professionals. I estimate that I've probably worked with conservatively 15,000 students over the years. And hopefully that's making a dent and helping a new crop of cybersecurity professionals, uh, you know, get their start and also become more competent in the industry. As far as my instructional style, I tend to be very laid back. I don't like to do things formal. It's very odd because I view any type of training situation as a conversation between the trainer or facilitator and the audience. You know, I'm here to have a conversation with the participants, not just speak and have everyone just take notes and listen. You know, I want to have some feedback back and forth, back and forth. So you're certainly welcome to ask as many questions as you like. They're going to forward them to me and I will answer them as I see them pop up. And I'll be happy to answer any and all questions you have. I can't guarantee that I can answer every question, but I do guarantee that I will research it if I don't know the answer and I will get you an answer. Um, so, you know, that's my promise to you. As far as certifications are concerned, I've been teaching certification classes almost my entire career. I started out teaching Microsoft certifications. I've taught uh, IDLE certifications. I've taught CompTIA certifications. In fact, everything on my resume, I probably taught at some point. The ones that I find to be the most valuable going into the future are going to be on the cutting edge technologies. Any cloud-based certification will be useful these days. You know, if you've got something from AWS, if you've got something from Google Cloud, if you've got something from Microsoft, those will all be useful certifications. CompTIA even has one called Cloud Plus, all right, which is a useful certification. Uh, cybersecurity will always be popular. You know, we will never have a shortage. <laughs> uh, uh, well, actually, we've got a shortage. I've, I've read studies that we've got, you know, quite a few openings in cybersecurity, but unfortunately, we don't have enough trained professionals to apply for those positions. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to counteract by training as many people as possible so that they can fill those positions and we can do a better job of preventing these cybersecurity breaches. Uh, project management is also a great area to go into because regardless of what industry you're in, project management will be a skill set that you can take with you to any industry. As far as the live training sessions that we're, I'm going to be doing, uh, the one that I'm really proudest of is the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner or the CASP Plus. Uh, this one is a great course. I'm going to talk more about it later in the presentation, and I'm hoping that uh, it's informative to everyone inside of the audience. As far as advice for people who are pursuing certifications, tips and tricks, things like that, what I recommend is that you find your passion more than anything in this industry, you have to find your passion. Don't get into information technology and cybersecurity because you heard there's job security. There is. I mean, I've been working consistently most of my adult life with very few uh, periods of unemployment in between. And don't do it because you hear the pay is good. I mean, the pay is okay. I don't see a lot of rich people in cybersecurity unless you own a company which is great if you can start your own company, you know, please do. We could use more entrepreneurs, but you've got to have a passion for what you do. If you don't have a passion for it, it's going to feel like drudgery, right? You've got to find what you enjoy doing. I enjoy training. I get up every day and I feel lucky that I get to do a job that I enjoy, right? That's what you need to do. I can't tell you that you should be a programmer. I can't tell you that you should be a cybersecurity expert. I can't tell you that you should be... Uh, working as a cloud developer. I can't tell you what you should be doing. 
you have to determine that on your own. So as far as which certifications you pursue, pursue the ones that get you closer to your passion, whatever that may be. As far as study is concerned, what I recommend is most of these certifications have some type of exam objectives or they have some type of outline that you can get from the vendor. My suggestion would be to download those objectives and use it as a checklist for your studies. You know, literally just go through and say, okay, I think I can answer questions about that topic. I think I can answer questions about that topic. This one I'm less familiar with. I'm going to do more research on this topic so that I can be more familiar with it. All right, do that and then use that outline as a checklist and you can just check things off as you go. Also, I recommend taking practice tests. There's some great practice tests available. cyberry has got wonderful resources for many different certification programs. I strongly recommend using those. Doing labs can also be helpful because it takes your knowledge and it applies that knowledge, right? Cannot say enough about that. As far as the practice tests are concerned, I always tell people aim high because even if you miss, you still can pass. You know, if you're getting on your, if you're taking a practice tests and you're getting around the 95 percentile range, most of the exams don't have passing scores that high. Most of them are in the, you know, 70 to 75 percentile range. If you're aiming for 95 and you come up a little short at 80, you still passed, right? So for me, when I'm taking certification exams, I sort of overdo it. I don't have a scheduled date of when I'm going to take them. Like I don't say I'm going to pass this exam in two weeks or this one in a month or this one in six months. What I do is I just study until I feel confident that I'm not only going to pass, that the only thing in question will be by how much. Um, that's not to say that I haven't had some challenging exams. I've had some very challenging exams. Um, but I have to say that today, I know when I'm ready. I literally know when I'm ready. If you take enough exams, you'll have that feeling of confidence and go, I know this backwards and forwards. You know, I've taken all these practice exams. I'm consistently knocking out of the knocking it out of the park. I could explain this to a total novice and they would understand what I'm talking about. All right. So for those of you who are interested in a career in information technology and cybersecurity, I say the first thing that you have to do is start getting some experience under your belt. Getting training is wonderful. Getting certifications is wonderful, but get some experience under your belt. If you want to work in information technology, start learning more about the devices themselves. Learn more about your laptop, more about your phone, more about your tablet. You know, don't be shy. Uh, learn what you can do as far as setting up a home network. You can do this in the privacy of your own home. A lot of that information will translate into a real world scenario. If you can get a job working as a intern with a company, you don't have to work for the big, you know, Fortune 500 tech companies. You can work for any company because all companies have some type of technical department, some type of IT department, some type of cybersecurity, right? Get some experience. If you want to work in cybersecurity, Cybersecurity is a bit of a tough nut to crack if you don't have experience. There's a lot of what, you know, are advertised as entry level jobs in cybersecurity only to find out that they're not entry level. They actually do require some level of experience. Cybersecurity requires that you have some foundational knowledge of information technology. You should have some basic hardware knowledge, some basic software knowledge, some basic programming knowledge some cloud knowledge. You should have uh, a good foundation in security before you even attempt to get a job in cybersecurity. You know, like if you want to work in a uh, security operations center, that's one of the more popular jobs these days. Even if you don't have the experience, there's ways that you can build your portfolio and build that experience. There's several online resources that you can use for doing online labs. You can you know, create a virtual machine, install a copy of Linux on it, and you can just tool around with it, you know, learn every single day. That's the wonderful thing about information technology and cybersecurity is you're constantly learning. I have been doing this for, you know, a quarter of a century, and I am still learning to this very day. I have a list of five different certifications that I'm working on uh, right now for 
the next few months, right? So constantly be learning, constantly pick up new things. Uh, let's see, we've got a question in the chat. Uh, what certification would I recommend if somebody really wants to become a SOC analyst? And what foundational course would you take before it as a prerequisite? Um, it's a little bit difficult to say without more information because I don't know what a person's background is. Most of the time when people ask which certifications they should take, I sort of have to ask them, well, what's your background? You know, do you have a good, strong foundation in hardware and software? If you don't, the CompTIA A plus certification is a great certification or the CompTIA IT fundamentals is a great certification and cyber has training in those. Uh, have a good background in networking. You know, you can get a Cisco certification like the CCNA. You can get the Network Plus from CompTIA. Those are great foundational certifications. If you want to get a great background in security, uh, CompTIA's Security Plus is a great certification to get. The Asaka SSCP is a great one to get uh, as a foundational one because they cover a wide number of topics in a lot of different areas and you can get great foundational knowledge from those as far as sock analyst is concerned that's a very specific job role because you're talking about someone who's going to work in a security operations center most of the time they're going to be performing defense you know incident management uh you know cybersecurity response things like that my recommendation in that area if that's where you want to go there's some vendor neutral certifications that you can look at, one of which is the CompTIA SISA Plus, which stands for Cybersecurity Analyst Plus. That's a good one to get a good foundational knowledge to work in a SOC. Um, there's another one which I'll be discussing during the presentation, the CERT Nexus CyberSec First Responder. That's a good one to get. Um, there's also some other ones out there if you're interested as well, like you know Blue Team certifications. Uh, I would recommend those, but have a good foundational knowledge before you work on your specialty, uh, because the more you know about the foundation, the easier it will be to build upon that. Uh, what do I suggest while preparing for the CompTIA Security Plus? How exactly do things uh, need to take care of? Okay, what do you need to take care of while studying? Security Plus is a great certification. I've actually taken it multiple times because it keeps versioning every three years. All of the CompTIA certifications, well, let me backtrack. Most of the CompTIA certifications will go through a revision process every three years. Uh, Security Plus is one of them. And they have a continuing education program with CompTIA so that once you achieve that certification, to maintain it beyond a three-year span, you have to get either one, a specific number of continuing education units, or two, you have to pass the exam again, the next version of it. Uh, what I would recommend on that is to go to the CompTIA website, download the objectives for the exam, you know, just print them out and use it as your checklist. Find a good training course. cyberry has got some wonderful training courses on Security Plus. Um, you can also obviously do additional research on your own. I've always said this to everyone. There's no one single solution that's going to help you pass a certification. I, after all these years, don't use a single source for passing a certification. You know, taking a cyberry course is a wonderful idea, but you can augment that knowledge by going to an online bookseller and finding a good Security Plus prep book or a practice test book, right? Certainly great resources there as well. Doing labs, you know, and if you don't have any labs that are already built, you can build your own. Download a copy of some type of virtualization software like, you know, VMware or something like that, and then build your own labs, you know, install your own operating system, and then just play around inside of it. That's really what I recommend, you know, know the material, but also get that hands-on experience, All right, Absolutely do that and take as many practice tests as possible because a good practice test will determine your strengths and weaknesses. You know, you may be excellent in these four topics. You may be needing some 
additional studies or additional work on two others, right? So use practice tests, not as a gauge of, oh, it's helping me learn. What it's doing is it's helping you identify your strengths, identify your weaknesses so that you can work on your weaknesses and turn them into strengths, right? Whatever area that you're um, struggling with on the practice exam, that's the area you need to hit the hardest. You know, I, my traditional way of studying for an exam is I'll study for it for a specified period of time. It depends on which exam it is, how much time I spend on it. I've been doing this for a while, so some of them I can do a little bit quicker, right? So let's say that I'm taking a new exam and I decide I'm going to spend three weeks studying for it. I take one practice exam at the end of that three weeks. Based on the results, I will look at the areas where I have performed well, and I'll look at the areas where I could use some improvement. The areas where I could use the most improvement are the areas I focus on in my second round of studies, right? There's no sense in beating it to, you know, beating it, beating it, beating it. If you've already mastered a skill, go to the things where you've been struggling and then master those, all right? And then after a certain amount of time, like maybe one more week, take a second practice exam and then see how much progress you've made between the first one and the second one. Are those still your weaknesses or have you identified another weakness? Fine. Spend another week working on those until they become your strengths. All right. At some point, you will feel confident that you can answer enough questions uh, to achieve a passing score on the examination. Um, you know, but that's always been my method. Do not, however, take a battery of exams back to back. Do not take practice exam and then as soon as you're done, take another practice exam and then as soon as you're done, take another practice exam. One, this burns through the pool of questions and at some point you will eventually start to see the same questions over and over again. That's a diminishing return. You don't learn as much if you're seeing the same questions over and over again. Two, nobody ever got smarter between one practice exam and then 15 minutes later, a second practice exam. It's you don't just, you know, flip a switch and go, oh, suddenly I've got it all. You know, usually you have to put in the work. So separate your practice exams with some reasonable period of time, like, you know, a week or so. Take one, study for a week, take another one. All right. That's my suggestion. All right. Well, we do have some certifications that we want to talk about as part of this. And obviously, you're welcome to ask any questions throughout the entire presentation. That's why they call it Ask Me Anything. But I want to talk about some specific certifications while we're here. There's four that I've chosen for this presentation. Uh, one is the ISC Squared's Certified in Cybersecurity. This is a fairly new certification that they've come up with. And it is really an entry level certification. It's probably one of the more interesting ones that I've seen. The second one is the CertNexus CyberSec First Responder. This, in, this is one that doesn't get as much uh, notoriety. It's not as popular as some of the more well-known vendors, but I think it's an excellent certification. And then we've got two of the higher level cybersecurity certifications from CompTIA, the Pentest Plus and the CAS Plus. I'm gonna talk about all of these during the course of the presentation. All right, first I want to introduce ISC Squared. If you're not familiar with it, the name actually comes from the International Information System Security Certification Consortium, IISSCC. That's why they call it ISC Squared. And they're a certification organization. If you've heard of them at all, you've probably heard of their certification, the CISSP, the Certified Information Systems Security Professional Certification. That is considered one of the premier certifications. I don't personally have it yet. It's on my list, All right? I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can knock this one down this year. Um, they're a great organization. They've got certifications like uh, the SSCP. They've got the CCSP, you know, acronym soup. I'll, I'll, I'll mention a lot of certifications, but it's mostly acronym soup. Uh, but they have certifications in healthcare. They have certifications in cloud security. They have certifications in uh, compliance and governance. Uh, it's a really great organization. This specific certification that I want to talk about is called 
certified in cybersecurity. They just, this is less than a year old. And ISC Squared had the goal of certifying over 1 million people as quickly as possible because they want to counteract the fact that we've got so many openings with so many companies, but we just don't have the people with the necessary skill set. This is an entry level certification. And I've passed this certification and I thought it was quite a good uh, starting point, quite honestly. Um, you know, it, at this point in my career, I'm not taking it just to pad my resume because I've got other certifications that are higher level. But I thought for a beginner, this is a great certification to have. I would say this one and the CompTIA's IT Fundamentals Plus are probably the two best introductory certifications if you don't have a lot of IT experience. Uh, because while studying for these exams, you will gain that experience. And some of the values of having this certification, you'll get the respect of being able to say, I have validated my knowledge in these topics, right? You can say that. You can possibly get job offers that you would not have gotten before because you had no proof of experience or proof of certification. It leads to personal development and growth, and it can lead as a pathway to other advanced certifications. You know, start with your certified in cybersecurity and then take your next one and then take your next one and then take your next one. Also, ISC Squared does a great job of supporting the community of people who have their certifications. They have a community of uh, CC certified people. They have a ton of uh, CISSP professionals that network together. Uh, it's great. And as far as higher salaries are concerned, I just want to preface this with, there is no certification that is a magic bullet that will give you a huge raise, right? There is none. There are lots of salary surveys out there that will say the average person that holds this certification makes approximately this much. What those surveys don't say is how many certifications they have total and what kind of experience they have. So when you see a salary survey, just remember that, you know, you're not necessarily going to get paid $125,000 just because you have your PMP, right? It, a lot of it has to do with what region of the world do you live in? You know, what's the cost of living there? What organization are you working for? How many certifications do you have total? What's your experience total? You know, that's going to factor into it a lot more than any one certification. So if you have the misconception that one certification is just going to rocket you into the stratosphere financially, uh, I haven't found it yet. And if anyone does find one, let me know because I'd like to retire early. And so far, I haven't found that magic certification yet. But it's the cumulative body of work that's going to help you more than anything. So this is a great starting point. It's where do you go with it from there. Now, it's broken down into several domains. They've got security principles is the first domain, and they're going to cover just the very basics of security. Things like confidentiality, integrity, availability, risk management. That's going to be 26% of your exam. Then they've got business continuity, disaster recovery, and incident response. What do you do when things go wrong? That's 10% of your exam. Then we've got access control, you know, where you have um, authentication, authorization, and accounting. All right, that's going to be 22% of your exam. Network security, very important. And that could be wired, wireless, you know, and it also includes the internet and the cloud, 24% of your exam. And then finally, security operations, the daily work we perform uh, to secure our data and secure our systems. Now, the Certified in Cybersecurity exam, uh, the exam code for it is CC. That's what uh, ISC Squared uses. The time length for the exam is two hours maximum. You can do it quicker than that but you are cut off after 120 minutes. The question types, they are multiple choice. They are all multiple choice. And it's in a linear format. You basically answer one question, you answer the next question, you answer the next question until you're done. The number of questions, exactly 100. You have two hours to answer 100 multiple choice questions. 
The passing score is a 700 out of 1,000. This is considered an entry-level certification, so there's no previous requirement for experience. I would recommend studying for it, uh, because if you have no experience, then you probably do need to study. Um, you know, all certifications, my opinion, are just a combination of experience plus studying. Right? You put in the work either way. You either put in the work by having the experience or you put in the work by studying. Right? So if you have less experience, you have to study more. If you have more experience, you can probably get away with studying less. You know, just study the things that you're, um, you know, that need the most improvement. All right, but this is an excellent certification. And I don't know if they're still doing it. I'd have to research this. But ISC Squared was offering the exam for absolutely free uh, because they were trying to get so many people certified. Now, obviously, you can take training for it. That's a totally separate issue. But the exam cost just by itself was free. And I thought that was pretty cool. It's part of the reason why I took it. The second certification I'd like to talk about is from CertNexus. Now, this is one that doesn't have as much uh, fame as some of the other you know, well-known vendors out there like Microsoft and Cisco and uh, Amazon and uh, ISC Squared, Nasaka and CompTIA. Those are some of the big names in certification. Uh, CertNexus is a vendor neutral, neutral organization, and they actually cover a lot of areas that are slipping between the cracks with the existing certifications. They cover areas like artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, data ethics, Internet of Things, and they do have cybersecurity as well. And they've got some really interesting certifications. I actually have three or four from them. I've got the one I'm about to talk about, the CyberSec First Responder. I've also got the DEBiz, which is Data Ethics Business for Business. Uh, I've got the CyberSafe, and I've got the, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember it, what the acronym stood for, but it's basically the um, Certified Internet of Things Security Practitioner. That's the full name of it. So the certification I'm going to talk about for CertNexus is the CyberSec First Responder. And this is going back to a question we were asked earlier, you know, how would you get into a job like a SOC analyst? This would be one I would recommend. This one and probably the, I would say the CompTIA SISA Plus, all right, the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus. This one's great because you can prove your blue team skills. And blue team, basically you're on defense. You're looking for indicators of compromise. You are looking for how do I find a cybersecurity incident? How do I contain it? How do I you know, recover from it? How do we learn from it? things like that. And you can, this is a great certification to have. Uh, it will actually, you know, set you apart from the field, from people who don't have it. In the United States, if you work with the military at any capacity, uh, this certification is actually on the Department of Defense 8570-8140 directives list as a certification. So that's pretty useful. And it can also help enhance your career. The Domains for this one are literally process-based. The very first domain that they've got in the exam is to identify. How do you identify that a cybersecurity incident has occurred? That's 22% of your exam. How do you protect the organization and its assets? That's 24% of the exam. How do you detect all right, that an attack is in progress? That's 18% of your exam. How do you respond to it? That's 19% of your exam. And then how do you recover from it? That's 17% of your exam. All right, the exam length, two hours maximum. I'm noticing a pattern here. The question types are multiple choice. It's a linear format. You get one question, then the next, then the next, then the next, until you go through the entire test bank. This one's only got 80 questions, so it's a bit shorter than the certified in cybersecurity. The passing score for it, and I know this is going to seem weird because there's two passing scores, 70% or 73%. This is directly taken from the CertNexus website. They have both passing scores because it's dependent upon which version of the exam you get on the day you test. Apparently, they've got a slightly harder version of the exam, and they know which is which. And one of them is 70% to pass, one is 73% to pass. 
my recommendation would be to study until you get 80% and don't worry about it, all right, which version you get. Uh, this one, they actually do recommend three to five years of experience working in a computing environment as part of a, um, a SOC, you know, a cybersecurity incident response team, something like that, where you've actually done some incident management in security. All right. So this is one where if you have limited experience, I would start a little further back. Start with your certified in cybersecurity. Start with your IT Fundamentals Plus and then work your way towards the certification. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that look at the CyberSec first responder and the CompTIA's um, size of plus as being roughly around the same level. They don't cover exactly the same topics, but they're in the same neighborhood as each other. They're both blue team certifications. The next two certifications I'm going to discuss are from CompTIA, the Computing Technology Industry Association, probably one of the most well-known certification bodies out there. Uh, they've got a lot of different certifications and for people who've taken their certifications, they know that most of them end with a plus. All right, they have IT Fundamentals Plus, which is their very basic introductory technological certification. They have their A Plus, which is their hardware and software troubleshooting certification. They have their Network Plus, which is their networking certification. They have their Security Plus, which is their foundational security certification. They've got SISA Plus, which is their Cybersecurity Analyst Plus certification. They've got Pentest Plus, which I'll talk about. They've got CAST Plus, which I'll talk about. They've got a new one called Data Plus, which is for people that want to work with data. Uh, good vendor neutral certification. They've got Server Plus for people that want to work with servers in the server room. They've got Cloud Plus for people that are going to work in a cloud environment. They've got Project Plus for project managers. Um, and they are constantly updating their portfolio of certifications. Their big three that they're known for are A Plus, Network Plus, and Security Plus. Those are their triumvirate, their big three. And if you had zero experience in information technology, I would say you can't go wrong with these three. All right. A Plus will teach you to troubleshoot any device you'll ever work with. Um, network Plus will help you troubleshoot any network you'll ever work with. And Security Plus will help you learn the basics of security. If I were to rank them, I would say that Certified in Cybersecurity from ISC Squared would be the entry level uh, cybersecurity certification. But Security Plus would be above that, probably on the same level as the SSCP. All right. But that's just my opinion. If you talk to several other trainers, I'm sure you'll get you know, other opinions from them as well. So the first certification I want to talk about is the Pen Test Plus, which stands for Penetration Testing. This is going to be more of an offensive certification. You're on offense, not on defense. And this one, you'll prove your red team skills. You learn the process of penetration testing. And you'll also learn about the tools that are used in penetration testing. And these also, just like the cybersecurity first responders, meets the Department of Defense 8570-8140 directives and can help enhance your career. Uh, I would say that the Pentest Plus and probably EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker are probably two of the more popular uh, penetration testing exams. Um, I know that the SANS organization has uh, some as well, uh, but the SANS organization, as much as I love their training and love their certifications, they are some of the priciest ones on the market. And uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty expensive. Pentest Plus uh, or Certified Ethical Hacker, probably more cost effective for most people. All right. So I can't say enough about it. This one is very process oriented. So the very first domain of Pentest Plus is planning and scoping. You have to plan before you do any pen testing. All right. This is going to be 14% of your exam. Then there's the information gathering and the vulnerability scanning. You're trying to look for those weaknesses in the system as a pen tester. That's 22% of your exam. Then you learn about the different attacks and exploits. That's 30% of your exam. Also reporting and communications because the point of a penetration test is to find the hidden vulnerabilities and to report those to senior management so that you can make recommendations on how they can harden their infrastructure 
so that those weaknesses no longer exist. All right. You've got to poke it a few times until you find the hole. And when you find the hole, you fill the hole. Also, there's a section on tools and code analysis. That's 16% of your exam. If this is an exam you are considering taking, I would recommend a certain amount of experience. And I'll talk about that a bit on the next slide. So the Pentest Plus certification, the length of the exam is 165 minutes max, right? It's a little bit longer than the previous two that I, were, I was discussing. CompTIA does their exams a little bit different than most organizations. The vast majority of questions are multiple choice. I will say that, no doubt about it. They are multiple choice. I mean, if you have an exam that's got 80, 90 questions, most of them are gonna be multiple choice. However, CompTIA also has performance-based questions where you will have to perform some type of manual task. You might have a diagram on the screen that shows a network diagram and it has servers on it. You'll have to click on the servers to find out information about those servers, like their IP address or uh, you know, their settings, something like that. And you'll have a scenario-based question where you'll have to answer the question by performing a task. Right? They have several performance-based questions on the exam. Or you might have to arrange things in a specific order by doing a drag and drop. You'll have all the possible answers on one side of the screen, and you'll drag and drop them on other sides of the screen. So those are more task-oriented questions. It is also in a linear format, which means you start on question one and you work your way to the end. Um, there is a review screen at the end, so you can go back and review your answers if necessary. The number of questions on the exam is not necessarily consistent, though. This is another sort of oddity about CompTIA, which I kind of like. They always tell you there's a maximum of X number of questions, and on the Pen Test Plus, it's a maximum of 85. That does not mean every person who takes it gets exactly 85 questions. You might get 80. You might get 79. You might get you know, 83. Um, I don't know what the minimum is because they don't publish that, but there is no guarantee you will get 85 questions. Or you may get more, you may get less than that. You know, I think the shortest CompTIA exam I've ever taken had, I think, 75 questions, something like that. And all the years I've been taking them. Now, CompTIA grades on a 100 to 900 scale. If you just sign into the exam and then immediately end the exam without answering a single question, you'll get 100 points and you'll fail miserably, um, which is kind of a shame because, you know, you're out that money. Um, 900 is perfect score. Don't worry about getting a perfect score. If you want to, that's fine. I've seen people uh, walk out of the exam and they'd have like an 890 and they go, what did I miss? It doesn't matter. You've got an 890, you passed. Uh, the passing score on CompTIA's Pentest Plus is 750 on a scale of 100 to 900. With this one, the recommended prerequisites from CompTIA are that you have Network Plus certification, Security Plus certification, or the equivalent knowledge. A minimum of three to four years hands-on cybersecurity experience. I have to say that I strongly agree with CompTIA's recommended prerequisites. I've seen people try to reach for something, uh, reach for a certification where they really didn't have the prerequisite experience and or foundational knowledge, and they struggled. Uh, I've seen people go straight for the CASP. If you have no experience whatsoever going straight for the higher level certifications, probably it's just going to lead to frustration. Go through the process, work the progression, build your foundation, build on top of that foundation, and then keep going. If you're not ready for the pen test plus yet, I would say find what level you're at, work there, and then build upon that until you are ready. Um, the pen test plus, I have to say, having security plus already really made that exam a lot simpler for me because when you take any cybersecurity exam, whether it's from CompTIA, whether it's from ISC Squared, whether it's from CertNexus, whether it's from ISACA, whether it's from Microsoft, AWS, it doesn't matter. There are certain cybersecurity fundamentals that will be covered on every exam you take. You know, you have to know about confidentiality, integrity, availability. You have to know about cryptography. You have to know about 
the different types of attacks, regardless of which exam you're taking, they all have some content, which you'll see again and again and again. All right. Um, but Pentest Plus is very process oriented and very tools oriented. You have to know the process of pen testing and they walk you through the process, but you also have to know the tools as well. For example, one of the tools that they discuss in the Pentest Plus exam is Nmap. You need to know Nmap and know it well um, because there will be some questions on it. Uh, you also need to be able to read code. Like for example, can you read Python? Can you read Ruby? Can you read, um, you know, um, um, PowerShell? Can you read a Bash script? These are going to be important skills to have. And if you don't have them yet, there's plenty of opportunities to learn them. If you're working in a Windows environment, you can certainly teach yourself PowerShell. Or if you're working in a Linux environment, you can teach yourself Bash. There's plenty of resources that are available for you uh, to learn those. Uh, those are two areas I would strongly recommend building up your skill set if you want to take on the Pentest Plus test. All right, finally, we've got the CASP Plus, which stands for the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner. This is the highest level cybersecurity certification that CompTIA offers. This one allows you to prove your security architecture and your security engineering skills. And this is really the one that is your crowning achievement if you're pursuing CompTIA cybersecurity certifications. My recommendation would be if you're doing CompTIA and you're taking the cybersecurity track, get your foundation out of the way, A plus and net plus. Take Security Plus. It's the best foundational course I've ever seen for cybersecurity. Um, from there, get your SISA Plus, all right, Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, and your Pentest Plus. And once you've gotten those, then you're ready for the CASP, or at least ready to tackle it. This one also meets the Department of Defense uh, 8570-8140 directives. So if you work with the military at all, they love CompTIA certifications, all right? They love the CyberSec first responder certification from certain nexus. And there are several other that are on the list if you are working in that capacity. The CAS Plus, the domains, there's only four of them. They've got security architecture, that's 29% of your exam. Security operations, that's 30% of your exam. Security engineering and cryptography, 26% of your exam. And this is a topic that we haven't really leaned on much so far. Governance, risk, and compliance. All right, these are three areas that will really help your career long term. We are working in a society where obviously privacy and security is a main concern with most of us. Governmental organizations, industries have regulations and standards, and we have to be compliant with those regulations and standards. We have to understand risk management. You know, how much risk are we willing to accept? What risk ha do we have to mitigate? How do we keep everyone in compliance with the standards that we have in place? That's a very important area to be knowledgeable on, especially if you want to advance your career beyond just the technical and you want to work on, say, management of information technology or management of cybersecurity. You know, start working your way up the ranks and some of those C level jobs like CTO, CISO. CIO, things like that. All right, great skill sets to have. The CAS Plus is 165 minutes maximum time limit. They've got multiple choice questions and they've also got performance based questions, just like the Pentest Plus. It's a linear format. You can go from beginning to end, but there's one thing that I didn't put on the slide. And this caught me off guard when I was taking the CAS Plus myself. They've got one question on it, at least when I took it, you know, in the previous year that they had a virtual machine simulator. The entire scenario was VM based. You had an honest to goodness working operating system and they gave you a scenario and they gave you a task to perform and you had to do it within the VM environment. If you're taking the CAS Plus and you come across this question, don't skip it because when you move on to the next question, it does not allow you to go back and reattempt 
the VM question. The performance-based questions, you can reattempt. You can change your answers. The multiple choice questions, you can reattempt. You can change your answers. The VM question, you get one shot. All right, so when it pops up on your exam, do it to the best of your ability. And then when you think you're done, move on to the next one because you're not coming back on that one. So that one I thought was quite interesting. Um, I don't know if CompTIA's plan is eventually to introduce more VM questions on some of their other exams. I personally feel that that is an excellent way to test somebody's skill set is by giving them a task that they have to perform. Uh, that to me is probably the highest level of examination. I understand the need for multiple choice exams because it's easier to score. Uh, but, you know, the more hands on activities you have in in examinations, I think the better it really does test your skill set. All right. So those are the four certifications that I wanted to discuss. Um, the certified in cybersecurity, the CyberSec first responder, the pen test plus and the CAS plus. All right. So now we also want to talk about some of our cybersecurity resources that are available. And I believe uh, Amanda wanted to say something about this. Yes. Hello, I'm back, guys. Thanks so much, Greg. That was a great overview. And I know you've answered a ton of questions already, but we do have some more in the chat, so we will absolutely get to those. And so before we entered the Q&A, I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview of some of the things that Greg talked about as to how Cyberary has some resources there, as well as a couple of other offerings that are available right now. So just want to make sure you all are aware of those. So first off, like I said, Greg is here as one of our newest live training instructors. So if you didn't know, Cyberary started offering live instructor-led training to our Cyberary for Teams customers. So if you are a Cyberary for Teams customer or would like to learn more about that, um, feel free to reach out to our team. And then if you missed it last week, we actually announced a new initiative called Cyberary Free Access. So all of the certification prep courses, as well as a ton of other con a ton of other types of content are free. So we're super excited about that. It's about 500 hours of free available content for anybody to dive into. And that includes all of our cert prep. And then the cert prep experience in general, like Greg mentioned a few times, we do also offer um, that those practice exams he was talking about, as well as virtual labs um, and other resources to help prepare for those certs. So feel free to check that out as well. And then in terms of current promotions, we are actually offering 50% off first month for new CIP members and also in unlimited live training offering for our Cyberay for Teams customers. So if anyone's interested in those, um, Madison from our team has been throwing links in the chat as we're chatting here. So feel free to check those out. But with that, we can move into the official Q&A here. So Madison, if you can send us some of the ones that we've seen in the chat, but first of the first one I want to touch on Greg, um, since we just came off of a cert that you referenced GRC, we had someone in the chat that is looking for a bit more in terms of recommendations you may have um, in terms of certs or really anything for somebody that's aiming to enter their first entry-level GRC role. Entry-level GRC, wow, that's... <laughs> uh, typically, GRC is not considered, you know, Amongst all jobs, entry level, it typically requires that you have some background and knowledge, but it's a great area. Um, it's an area that I'm actually fond of learning more about because, as I said before, we've got all these government regulations. We've got all these industry standards, making sure that people have proper governance in place. They have risk management in place, making sure the compliance is in place. Um, it is mentioned in several of the cybersecurity certifications, including CAS Plus. We mentioned it there. I know that um, there's some that are offered by ISC Squared and ASACA, but uh, those two organizations are kind of interesting because they have mandatory prerequisites for many of their certifications. Those two organizations are a bit different than some of the other certification bodies. You can take the exam, but you also have to document your experience in that subject matter area. 
All right. So that's what will make it challenging for those certifications. Like right now, I have passed the ASACA Certified Information Systems Manager or CISM exam. I passed it last month. Yay me. But I still have to go through the process of documenting my experience before they'll actually grant me the certification. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the challenges you have. What I would recommend before you even start working on the certifications is start looking at the actual regulations, the standards that are already in place. Look at the uh, NIST standards. You know, there's quite a few of those. Look at the GDRP and um, the EU. Look at the uh, California Consumer Privacy Act. Look at uh, the PCI DSS and start learning about the different standards and regulations that are already out there. Look at ISO standards because this is going to be a huge part of it. The R part of GRC is risk management. I can't say enough about that. There are some risk management certifications, but if you are looking for a risk management certification, be careful because a large number of the risk management certifications are specifically related to the insurance business and not information technology. Probably the one I would recommend is the risk management professional from the Project Management Institute. But the Project Management Institute is another organization that requires some type of prerequisite experience. All right. The Project Management mm -hmm. Institute, you're probably all familiar with the PMP. That requires experience. Um, I actually have the Certified Associate in Project Management, which also requires experience. Um, that's probably the one I would recommend the most for risk management. Um, I know that, um, let's see, who was it? Asaka's got some really good higher level risk management and compliance and governance certifications as well. So that's another place to check out. But as far as entry level GRC, oh, um, I believe that ISC Squared just changed the name of one of their certifications. They had the cap, but now they're changing the name of it uh, to GRC. So that might be one to, worth pursuing as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. So another one we have here, um, and I feel like this is something that we hear a lot, especially at Cyber. So someone who has a background in physical security, um, specifically with the military, they're planning on transitioning into cybersecurity. So in order to get as smooth of a transition possible, what advice would you recommend? And before I hand it over to you, Greg, I do want to plug again the, the Cyberry free access offering. Um, that's something that you can start for free that provides you with pathways for someone looking to do exactly what you're trying to do. But I'll let Greg give his two cents there too um, as far as what he re would recommend. I think having a background in physical security is excellent because in some of the, especially the entry level cybersecurity certifications like Security Plus, that's one of the topics that's discussed on the exam is physical security. So you're already a step forward uh, versus someone who doesn't have that experience. I mean, we talk about, uh, you know, different types of locks you can put on doors like biometrics, and we talk about fences, and we talk about security cameras and things like that. That's all useful information. Again, I would look at the exam objectives, you know, from all the vendors. Every vendor has a list of exam objectives you can download from their website, whether it's CompTIA, ASACA, ISC Squared, Certain Nexus, you name it, they all have downloadable objectives. And download those and see what areas are your strengths and which areas are going to require more study. All right. I've always recommended that. I'm going to keep beating that drum. As far as where I would start, if you don't have a lot of experience in cybersecurity, I would recommend starting with the certified cybersecurity from ISC Squared, the one I mentioned previously, and the Security Plus. Right? Those are the two that I would recommend starting out. The more you build your foundation, the easier it is to build upon that foundation. I can guarantee you that it's a lot easier to get a CAS Plus if you've gone through the progression of you know, IT Fundamentals Plus, A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, SISA Plus, Pentest Plus, and then CAS Plus versus trying to skip to the last step, right? Mm -hmm. So, but again, it, a lot of it's going to depend upon where you are in your journey. Awesome. Great. So another question that we have, um, 
and would love your opinion here. So someone is asking specifically about the value of Compte asserts and that they, I guess, could necessarily be regarded as higher value as opposed to the CISP and CISA and C-RISC, um, whereas the Compte asserts are more practical. Um, and is, well, first, is that something that you agree with that, I guess, CompTIA or that the ISC squared certs are higher regarded than CompTIA or if there's a real difference there in terms of what uh, employers value? I think industry, um, the CISP has obviously got a wonderful reputation in the industry. It's probably one of the most sought after certifications by employers um, because it's, it's absolutely excellent. Uh, CISA for auditing is great. C-RISC is a risk management certification. That one's great. What makes those high value is not just the fact that they are challenging exams, but also that they have that mandatory experience requirement. I mean, you can mm -hmm. pass the exam, but if you don't have the prerequisite experience, they will not grant you that certification. You can say you pass the exam, but you don't have the certification. Like I said, I passed the CISM, which also has some value, but until I finish the paperwork and get it approved, they're not going to grant me the certification, right? So that's why those have such value. CompTIA has never had mandatory requirements. You could take the CASP today, just sign up for the exam and go take it. There's no mandatory prerequisites. This is something that I wish they had because I don't want people to spend a lot of money on an exam when they're not ready for it. Right. Right. I, I mean, I don't want to see people fail. I mean, I've, I've actually um, been at testing centers where I've seen candidates walking out in tears and it's not a pretty sight. You know, I want to see everybody succeed. I want to see everybody go in, slam dunk the exam and then go out and do a lap around the building when they're done. But Absolutely. the problem is that so many people have been, uh, get, been given bad information, you know, here, take this exam and you're going to go get paid a lot of money. No, it doesn't work like that. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to do the work. You have to go through the progression, right? CompT exams have an excellent reputation. I mean, a plus net plus and security plus have been, a staple of information technology for decades, and they're still in demand for people to have those certifications. Uh, Pentest Plus and Siza Plus, they added probably less than 10 years ago. Those are still gaining traction. I think that Certified Ethical Hacker is probably a little bit more high value than Pentest Plus, but I think that's changing. Uh, CAS Plus, I think, is really starting to get some value to it. I really do. Um, but again, CompTIA does not have that requirement for mandatory experience requirement like ASACA and ISC squared do. And I think that's why they have a different perception for those exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And so, Greg, I know we're a little bit over time, but we can stay on for a few more minutes um, if people have more questions. And I actually had a couple for you as well. Okay. And I know you answered a lot of them already, but... Um, in terms of just general top advice that you could give someone who is not only, you know, preparing for certifications, but making that um, journey into pursuing a cybersecurity career. Is there anything, you know, if someone asked you, what would your top piece of advice be? Do you have kind of a go-to? Well, I've sort of mentioned this earlier, but find your passion. You know, some people are destined to become great cloud developers. Some people are destined to be great cybersecurity analysts. Some people are destined to be a CISO. Some people are destined to be trainers. It really depends on what your passion is. If it's your passion, it does not matter how much work you have to do to get to where you want. You will enjoy it because it is your passion. The second thing I would recommend is to find a mentor, right? Find someone who does have that experience. I was lucky that early in my career, when I was working in the data center, I had great mentors around me who would help me with every step I needed until I became more confident in my abilities. 
I mentor people whenever I get the opportunity. If someone wants to drop me a line on LinkedIn, I am happy to talk uh, because I want to pay it forward. You know, that people were nice enough to mentor me. I want to mentor others. So find a mentor who can give you sage advice because they've been there and they know the things you'll need. They'll know the obstacles you'll face and they'll, you know, hopefully give sage advice. Yeah, absolutely. And I just dropped your uh, LinkedIn uh, link in the chat. So if anyone wants to reach out to Greg, feel free to do so. And so speaking of yourself and your passion for training, I know I mentioned um, briefly earlier on that you're, you have a few uh, courses that are coming up. So do you want to talk a little bit about the training session, specifically the live training um, that you're going to be teaching over these next few months for the Cyberry Live offering? I actually love that Cyberry has started to offer these live offerings. You know, obviously people's schedules vary. Uh, some of the courses that are already in the Cyberry uh, catalog are wonderful. I've been through it and there's some excellent training materials available in there. However, live, there's no substitute for it. Whether it's virtual or in person, you get to interact with a live instructor. You get to ask questions. You get to have a conversation. And that's really what the trainer's job is in a live session is to be a facilitator of knowledge transfer. That's my philosophy. Um, I will talk a lot during my training classes, obviously, because, you know, supposedly I'm a subject matter expert, but <laughs> the people who come into training also have experience. I do not assume that I know everything. Someone could come in and they've had a job working for XYZ company and they've been working on servers that I haven't worked on. They have experience. I don't. I want them to bring that into the conversation or someone's worked with a sim over in this company that I haven't worked with. That's something I want them to bring to the conversation, right? It's a conversation. So we discuss these topics as a group and we all collectively learn more. I learned something in every class, quite honestly. And uh, <laughs> that's another reason I love my job. Awesome. Oh, we're super excited to have you. And so some of the courses that Greg has coming up for Cyberry specifically are the ITIL certification, uh, the CASP, as well as the IT fundamentals uh, cert as well. So those are some that we have on the calendar that are coming up. And we have another question here, actually, so we'll answer that. Um, all right. So when it comes to the most bang for your buck, Greg, do you think a multiple choice base exam like a pen test plus has more value or weight to an organization um, over a skills base exam like the OSCP? Well, the offensive security who has the OSCP um, is a excellent organization. I, you will never hear me say anything negative about them because their exams are hands on. They have sort of eschewed the multiple choice model for a more hands-on approach. And I think it's an excellent approach. Now, I'm not going to pit one certification body against another. I'm not gonna do that. Um, you know, they're all wonderful in that regard. Um, I think you have to have a good mix of the theory as well as the practice. And CompTIA does a great job with covering the theory. I mean, as I said before, I cannot find a better introductory security class than security plus because they literally tell you a little bit about every aspect of security every single aspect of security there is i think no better fundamental course than that uh, the oscp is a very specific course and it's hands-on and you are learning actual skills that you can work in a live environment but i think that having both is beneficial beneficial if you can do the task but you don't understand the why behind it you're just doing things from rote memory. If you understand the theory but can't do it, it's unapplied knowledge. I think you have to have both the theory and the practice. So I would actually recommend mm -hmm. having both. Now, as far as value is concerned, value is in the eye of the beholder. If your organization values one over the other, that's, that's the way it is. I mean, in the hiring pool, it's the same way. When 
you look at all these different jobs that you can apply on and they're looking for this certification and this certification, that's what they value, all right? You may have other certifications, that's awesome. That's something you could bring to the conversation. But a lot of people who are hiring use those certifications as a checklist and either you have them or you don't. Um, mm -hmm. Now me, I think, you know, all learning is good. So um, that's why I have a pile of certifications. I'll take any exam. I don't care um, because, you know, even if I just pick up one nugget that can help me with what I am passionate about, it's worth it. You know, I'm taking cloud courses, but I'm in cybersecurity. Why? Because the cloud needs to be secured as well. Awesome. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you so much. I think this is a good place to wrap up. Um, you know, we're a little bit over, so definitely want to be respectful of everyone's time. But again, thank you so much. Greg, for joining us. It was a pleasure getting to introduce you to the Cyberry community. And we're super excited for your courses that are coming up and to have you here again to answer more questions for folks. Well, it's been my pleasure and I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, and just to reiterate, the Cyberry uh, live access or ooh, I'm mixing up different offerings now, the Cyberry live training um, is available for Cyberry for Teams customers. So if you already are one, be sure to contact your customer success manager um, to get on that calendar. If you want to learn more about it, feel free to reach out to our team. Um, and again, the Cyberry Insider Pro um, subscription is 50% off your first month for this month. So be sure to check that out if you've been thinking about um, upgrading to the hands-on content. But with that, I will wish you all a great rest of your day and we will see you all soon. Goodbye.